Welcome to the Rapport Advantage Podcast, transforming the way leaders communicate. Here's your host, Alex Swire Clark. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show today, people. Today. Hey, Alex. How are you, Liz? I'm good. How are you doing? Excellent. Very, very good. The sun is shining after two days of rain. I'm excited. Uh, it's a great day to have a podcast, and we're looking forward to having a special guest today. That's right. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. If you haven't listened to our podcast before, we are the Rapport Advantage Podcast. We are here to help you break down the walls of miscommunication, increase your emotional intelligence, and build better relationships in the workplace and beyond. One of these days, I'm going to use my fake radio voice on one of these, and it's going to be very cheesy, but very fun for me to do. Um, <laughs> you haven't done that yet? No, I haven't, Liz. No. I'm planning on it. Wink, wink. Um, anyway, uh, I am Alex Swire Clark, CEO, speaker, and certified human behavior expert. And I'm Liz Parker, certified behavioral analyst, strategic growth consultant, and job benchmarking specialist. Specialist, which we're changing it up. I like it. I am. I like it. This show is all about you, the listener. Please give us your feedback and input. We want to make the show as much of a value for it as we possibly can. You can find us on Facebook at The Rapport Advantage, on Twitter at Rapport Podcast, or visit the website at rapportadvantage.com. You can leave a digital message through our SpeakPipe app, all kinds of different ways to get in touch with us. If you don't get in touch with us, it's not on me. It's on you. <laughs> Today, we are absolutely positively delighted to have a special guest with us, Mr. Sean Brandenburg, Vice President of Growth and Development at Team Worldwide. Sean, how are you today? Good, great, thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Hey, great Where to have you, you here. Of course. <laughs> yes, yes. You and Liz have been have been associated with each other for many, many moons, uh, and today's our first day getting to know each other. So, for me and for the rest of our audience, can you tell the folks a little bit about uh, who you are? Yeah, I am the vice president of growth and development for Team Worldwide, as you said. Uh, Team Worldwide is a international and global transportation provider. Um, we have offices around the country, and you're involved in everything from shipping uh, expedited cargo by truckload, by by aircraft, and, and by ocean. Wow. So, hey. do, so do you guys like specialize in any one type of industry, whatever? I mean, do you do everything from produce to radioactive materials, or what do you guys specialize in? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's one of the things that uh, that we do specialize in. We do a lot of radioactive material, actually. So it was kind of, I know you just pulled that out, but we do <laughs> do radioactive material. <laughs> We've done everything from candy to, to you know, to, to generators, to aircraft. And the only thing I think we really don't do is we try to stay away from live animals as much as possible. Um, so my background a little bit. I'm a veteran of the United States Air Force where I got into logistics because my recruiter told me that I could work on computers in logistics. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, I listened to a salesman there and he told me uh, what I wanted to hear and I uh, got out of that not really realizing that there was a commercial side to what we did and, and uh, went to the international side of, of transportation, started in doing air freight, started doing ocean freight, started doing some imports, some exports. So I've kind of done a little bit of everything and, and been a business owner for about 10 years in this industry and then uh, fell into with me and then ended up here at Team Worldwide a few years ago. And also, I am also a certified behavioral analyst as well. There you go. Woo-hoo! I got another one in the group. Three of us on the same show. Whatever are we going to do? <laughs> Hey, and I have to tell you how proud I am of Liz for using the details of the history of DISC in her in her explanation a few podcasts ago, because that is not her, and especially her using the Wonder Woman um, comment Marston. That was pretty and awesome. That And that is, I attribute all that to Sean, because we do have a story there. So Alex, I know that you're going to let me turn this over, but can I take it? Uh, take it and run. <laughs> fair, run as far fair as fair enough. Please come. I want you to be able to ask questions as Sean and I get into our discussion. But I just kind of want to get in since I've known Sean for over five years. We've worked together on and off and have become friends through this whole period. I just have to go back to the whole Wonder Woman thing. You got to tell the history of this, Sean. Why this was so important to you when I talked about Wonder Woman on our history. Well, I, when we do a lot of the programs that we run together, one of the things that and Liz started getting into and talking about the history of DISC and 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 start out, um, you know, how we use this. And this was years ago when we first started working together. 
And so I said, you know what? I really need to see some of the background on the theoretical mind. Um, I'm looking at it and saying, yeah, I'm just, I'm not so convinced, I'm not so convinced yet. And uh, so as she started feeding me the data and then I started reading through everything and of course getting back to, to uh, Empedocles and, and uh, you know, the entire history through Young and everything else. And I come across the, the history with Marston and found out he wrote the Wonder Woman comic book. And of course I called her back and I said, did you know <laughs> that this guy wrote the Wonder Woman comic books? And, and so it was just a big joke between us. And now every time that we, that we do a program together, of course I bring that up. And it's always a little bit of an interesting tidbit that we add in. It was detail that was boring to me that I didn't pay any attention to. <laughs> that I The boring part was the detail. I didn't want to read it, but the cool part was when he pulled out the Marston stuff on the Wonder Woman. So he is a, he's the guru on that. So that's where that started from. So uh, Sean, let's kind of dig in a little bit. And as we start thinking about DISC and things along that line, tell me a little bit about um, how you and team right now are using DISC, even though I kind of know. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that, that we do is um, we go through and we generally any management level or, or sales level people that we hire in, we automatically run an assessment on them. Well, we do we do the interviews first, whether or not that it's somebody that we want to really kind of move to the next level with. Then we'll go through and we'll run an assessment on them. And then we look and see, you know, it's not so much just about whether or not that they fit into a perfect mold that we're, that we're trying to accomplish. But what we're looking for is to find out whether or not that there's going to be a good fit behaviorally with the people that they're working with as well. So you necessarily want to have uh, someone that's a huge high D managing somebody that's going to be uh, a very, very high because in, in some of those areas, it not, it's not necessarily the employee's fault. It may, it may be the manager. And so we may like the person, but we may decide that they have to go and, and really report to somebody else in order to get the best use of our time and money that, um, that we're investing in this person. Great. So as you kind of think about that and you think about what works best in organizations, do you find you're kind of the guy that has to be the one running it or do you actually get the whole leadership team involved in, in learning about DISC? Well, we've gone through and we've, and we've tried to get um, just about everybody involved with it that we can and generally gone through and, and for us, for example, we've run more or less a, an alignment program with uh, within the leadership group. And we've also done that within even the corporate staff and in trying to get them to understand what happens out in the branch in the branch offices. And so as we've gone through and we've done those, those classes with you, we've done a lot of that um, instruction and we really find that it, it kind of turns into a very fun thing. So as you walk around the office here, you'll see everybody has a little a little photo and uh, their chart and it just kind of makes them more self-aware. Unfortunately for me, at least being that he, the majority of people around here are really high S's. And so they all know that there's, I think there's two of us that are high D's in the entire, in the entire corporate office. And so they all know to look out for the two of us. <laughs> hey, and by the way, not anger, it's passion. I just have to keep it. I have to keep stressing that. <laughs> Not anger, it's passion. <laughs> gonna, that's going to be our disquote of the day. <laughs> That'll actually <laughs> be a good one, in, so. won't it? So, so uh, Alex, can you kind of tell what Sean is? We know he's a big D on one side, but can you tell if there's any other backup style in him as he was talking? I could, but I'd be cheating because I kind of know <laughs> already. But um, at, just looking at his workspace, the folks who are listening to us can't see that. Um, he's uh, kind of go, coming into us through the Zoom application. On his whiteboard behind him, he's got uh, several pictures up there. He's got little hearts and little stars. So I'm going to guess I, <laughs> and this, what the stars looks like, it's pixely, like sparkly blue, <laughs> not just regular blue. So I'm, I'm going with the eye in there. Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately, the, the these things that have been kind of stuck there have just kind of ended up sticking, and I didn't end up... Uh, Taking them down, but um, yeah, my daughter likes to come in and stick things, stick things on my wife. So, for those of you that do know what we've talked about with the disc, um, the fact that he's just left it up there for all that time means he's got a low C. He doesn't really have attention to detail back in there that he's worrying about, so he just lets it go. A high C and have that board cleaned, ordered, and ready to to roll. <laughs> So should I should I tell you what, what where I'm at with all of those, or are you guys going to go and play the guessing game all day? <laughs> oh, hey, I'd be happy to hear you just kind of analyze yourself with that. That'd be great. Um, so I, I'm a 100D. Woo! I'm an 86I. Uh, I am a 6S and a Ooh. 26B. <laughs> 
Wow, a 6S. Alex, tell yeah. us about uh, the difference between you and Sean there. Um, we're lacking some compassion on Sean's side of the room, and um, I, I am I'm going to be too touchy-feely for Sean if we were to- <laughs> to get to know each other very well because sean i'm a is uh, so uh, i'm all about making sure that everyone in the room is okay that there's peace and harmony and all that kind of good stuff so i'm i'm one of those folks that surrounds you and your organization on a daily basis we're <laughs> seeking harmony don't change things on us too fast you know oh my gosh with new business cards ah, i don't know how to relate so yes so i'm, I'm, I'm with you on that uh, my, my d is just beneath the midline but i'm i'm an is so uh i, I can appreciate your your high d Go get a mentality. We've got a lot of those folks in our organization, especially on the sales side. That DI style blend is so, so great in sales. Um, go out there, hunter or farmer. You can entertain. You can get facts done. It's, it's, a, it's a great, great combination to have. Yep. So, Sean, since he did talk about sales, our last episode, we talked about um, DISC in sales. And I know that you work around the salespeople. You manage kind of that whole side of the the business for team. Um, Tell me how you think your salespeople view DISC or how they actually use DISC. Well, I mean, we've we've really we've done a lot of programs with them, and, and they've actually found it pretty exciting. And it's one of the the best responses that we get back when we run the programs from the salespeople, as they say that this was one of the most interesting parts of the entire weekend program. And so, as we do the different levels of the program, and then we get they get kind of a little bit more information, they get some refresher each time. It's one of the things that they that they find that. Um, as they get more practice with it and as they get more experience with the the sales calls is that they really start to get into and they start to understand a little bit more. They struggle with it in the beginning, of course, and everybody always says, eh, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure. There's always that that um, a little bit of doubt that they have when they start. But of course, as we go through the program, you know, by the end of the first day, they generally are, are nonstop talking different behaviors and about the way that they act and and the and they start trying to read each other just to get a little bit more experience and it's always a lot of fun uh, you know, coming back and, and seeing them the second time around and starting to see how they've applied some of that new knowledge into into their sales program I would agree. And I just want to share just with the listeners just a little bit that um, you do make it fun. You are very good at being able to adapt to the different styles. And Alex, I got to tell you that we do situations sometimes with um, actual business cases that they have to analyze and go through. And Sean can play the customer so well. He is able to be that DI, SC, whatever it is, and adapt himself so well to that, that the the actual salespeople have no clue what's going on <laughs> until <laughs> when he shows up at first. <laughs> yeah, when we do a role playing, Sean, and I'm not sure how it is for you, but but my team loves for me to to play the part of ladies because I get into this. Hello, how are you? So I don't know if, if they're entertained by that in your department, but that that works in ours. <laughs> That's exactly that's exactly what it is. And generally, when we go through and we and I get somebody that I have to play who's a really high eye, is I generally just throw it out and I'm and I'm the big lady and I'm huggy, feely, touchy, kissy, and and it just completely throws them off the game. And and it's a you know it's a little bit of me having fun with it because it does it does kind of wear you out when you're doing it over and over and over again. But it, it lets me have a little bit of fun with it and it kind of throws them off a little bit and it kind of puts them into a stressful environment, especially, you know, when I get somebody who's either going to be a very high C or is going to be a very high S and, and they just don't know what to make of it at all. <laughs> that quick change act is really, really one that um, allows people to figure out how to adapt quickly. So nice job, Sean. Yeah. And Alex, nice to know you've got an inner woman as well. <laughs> oh, I've got lots of inner things that we don't want to talk about on the podcast. Um, I did have a follow up question for Sean, though. So, Sean, in your sales cycle, are you primarily looking for hunters or farmers? And and in terms of looking for a disc personality profile, does that does that kind of dictate who you look for when you're when you're hiring new folks? Uh, yeah, it really, it, it does a little bit. I mean, when I go through and we're running, um, you know, a job benchmark, you know, of course, one of the things that we found in at least the job benchmarks that we've run is we're really looking for somebody. You know, at least in the in the the disc wheel, somebody that's around that uh, that mid eye, almost not quite a, not quite into the D range, but they're about halfway between the outer and the inner wheel. 
Um, I think that that block is, I think, uh, column four or block 42. But um, so they're somewhere around there. But we, we run those and that's the ideal person that we're looking for, at least as far as behaviors come. Um, you know, when you start talking about into into the, the motivators and the descriptors and we start really looking at somebody who's very, a very utilitarian type of a person, that's something that we also look for as well. I know that that's a whole nother conversation outside of where you guys are at today. But those are the things we try to tie in that part of the person as well because you start to look at and and again Alex I'm not sure who you who you've done your disc training with but with TTI they've done a lot of surveys and you can go through and you can really look at you know some of the percentages that they found out where where people that are truly successful in sales kind of sit and and by you know by far and large people that are generally in the I category are the best people in sales. These are also very good in sales, but only typically culturally in the U S and you start looking about, um, uh, about Europe, for example, some of those surveys come back and they start to see that S's are pretty good in sales. But when you look at the European concepts, one of the things is that they run, you look at the key account managers, right? And key account managers are still considered sales. And so key account managers typically end up being very successful in sales or, or S's end up being very successful in sales in Europe because they fill those key account manager roles very, very well. And really working those relationships, building those bonds and, and continuing to invest themselves into others and invest themselves into their prospects, into their clients right. versus those D's who are going up there. Okay. Are you going to sell? Are you going to buy from me today? Not. Okay. I'm, I'm moving on. Okay. I'm coming yeah. back in two weeks. Are you buying from me today? Darn. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as, as soon as we sell somebody, I'm ready to go find the next big, the bigger, better deal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to sit around and have to see that same person every month. <laughs> So, Sean, because you did mention a little bit about that international background, um, you know, I know you work internationally, but um, tell a little bit uh, about what you're doing with the listeners as far as how you're using international, the, what, what you do internationally, and does this work internationally? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that, you know, because I travel a lot overseas and I, and I really, I go... Um, to Europe quite a bit. I've, I've traveled through South America quite a bit. I don't really get to Asia that often, but you know, sometimes I'm just visiting with our counterparts there and other times I might be visiting clients. But you know, it's something that does hold true pretty, you know, it's solid through regardless of where somebody's from or what their, their origin is background is, what their cultural background is, when you go through and you look at it, there may be differences culturally to where you see some people will go back and, and have, uh, you know, for example, Danish. The Danes typically are very high Ds. You can go through and you can look at Germans typically are high Ds and high Cs. You know, so there is a lot to say with some cultural background and how that kind of plays a part with people. But, you know, we do go back in and use it. And, and we re- recently run a program, you know, with one of our partners in the in the United Kingdom. And, you know, we kind of, we wanted to get more of them involved in doing some assessments. And a few of them did. And, and we had a lot of fun with it because one was a father and one was a son and, and there were some other people. But, but they were really surprised how accurate it was as well. And they really didn't buy into it until they did it themselves. And that's when they were really shocked at how accurate it was. But uh, so you see that, that it doesn't matter really where that person comes from, the, that these, these things will hold true regardless of what that background is. And that is very true. I think you hit the nail on the head. A lot of times they just need to get the assessment and take it um, and actually see how really accurate it is about um, their styles. I know that ours tend to run about 86 to 93 percent accurate. And so it kind of hits right on to that, that button for those people. So as you kind of think about the different styles, Sean, is there a certain style that just takes it out of you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the S's and the C's really lead me quite a bit. I mean, when somebody's a really high C, see, when somebody is, let's say, a, na- a 90 S and, they, and they're not an I, let's say they're an S and a C, man, just no expression, no engagement. Um, and they may, be, they may be very engaged, but the, the problem is when you don't see that expression on their face, it just really wears me out. And, and it almost makes it to where you want to just kind of shake the person and say, hey, will you, will you answer me or will you listen to what I'm saying? Are you, are you hearing me? <laughs> and they could be hearing everything you're saying. It's just the fact that they're not reacting to what you're saying. And that just kind of makes it, it, your mind has to go a thousand miles a minute trying to say, am I getting through to them? So Alex, you want to re- reply to that at all? <laughs> 
no, I'm scared. I don't want to be shaken. Well, but he's got the eye. So, you know, that's the thing is that if he was a C, then we would go back in this, this, this conversation probably wouldn't be as exciting as it is. <laughs> we do count on those eyes coming through, don't we? <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Yes, we have, we have quite a few uh, SCs in our organization as well. We have a lot of folks um, in, uh, in our medical billing company who uh, are very much data-driven, and very reserved, tons of reserved people. And so trying to get them up and active, engaged, if you want to play a game or role play, who wants to volunteer? <laughs> people sitting on their hands. And you're like, yeah. come on now. <laughs> Seriously, let's get up. Let's get after it. So uh, it's, it's, it's different. Yeah, they, they have to kind of be voluntold. They don't really volunteer <laughs> for anything. <laughs> voluntold. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. But the, but the good thing is they typically have really good ideas, especially your seats about processes and things right. like that. But you just have to draw it out of it. It's painful sometimes. But 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 when it gets there, oh, you know, some gold there. You just have to mine and mine yes, and mine. Yes. So. And it is. It's learning that um, even as an I, I mean, I think one of the biggest things that we've learned through time is that when you're working with those S's and C's that we want to get in their face to get them to come out. And we've learned we have to back off and we have to give them the space and we have to slow our pace down. And we're not very good at that. <laughs> Bringing that up, I mean, it's one of the I have to say is that I think, and you guys know, is that even, you know, no matter how good you are at, at, at this and, and being able to analyze that situation or or look at that other person, is we're still people, right? And at the end of the day, even though you know, I know that I can't be a great big D when I'm dealing with an S. I'm still a D. And so sometimes it's it really, you have to work very, very hard in order to, to not um, put that person off. And so you do have to adapt a lot. And, and sometimes it, it's it's hard, even though we know we have to adapt, it's hard to, to, to do that. And it's hard to remember to do that. And, you know, we can't, we're not all perfect. And sometimes we forget and, and uh, we still come out as a great big D or a great big I and, and scare that person to death. And then, you know, it does still create conflict and, and well, maybe not conflict, but it creates those issues that we want to try to avoid. And we have to kind of back off a little bit and come back at it a different way. And kind of just following up on that one piece, Sean, you know, do you let people off the hook if they say, Hey, I'm an S and I just can't do it. Or do you expect them to still do it on the job? And not no, to think, pick on S's, but I mean C's or D's or whatever. No, I think you still have to expect people to do the job. It's just a matter of, you know, do you expect them to do it your way or do you expect them to do it their your, their way? And that's one of the things I'd have to say through this process for me uh, over the years of having, you know, been more in, involved in learning more about it is, you know, I would have approached it much differently five years ago versus the way that I would approach that today. You know, and I, and I can tell a story of one of the ladies that, that used to work for me who was a great big guy and she would always just, you know, come into me and just like, I want to do it this way. I want to do it that way. And she would never say, you know, okay, well, here's why I want to do it this way. And I'm just like, you know, do it my way, do it my way. You know, and I didn't really mean, hey, do it my way. I'm like, okay, my way is the right way, but here's why it's the right way. Or, you know, she would need, you know, what I really wanted her to, to do was to say, here's, you know, I'd like to do this, but this is why I want to do it this way. Um, and I think that, you know, had I known the things that I, I would have probably gone and said, Hey, you know what, I'll give you some, some leeway here and you go and do that. And then just kind of get back to me on the results and let's take a look and see, and see, and then we'll kind of discuss it and, and, and see what we found out. You know, so I think that's the way you have to kind of approach it now. Just because somebody's going to do it a different way, doesn't really mean it's the wrong way. It, just because you do it a certain way, what happens? I said just because they do it a certain way doesn't mean it's the wrong way. It's just different. Yeah. That's perfect. You know, I'm thinking through, you know, one of the people that you worked with through your career had really, really appreciated some of the work that you'd done um, with her in her development. Do you attribute any of that to the DISC and the, the relationship uh, management that you did with her? You know, that, um, that letter, I have to tell you, is one of the things that you, that you really, you do this kind of stuff for, right? Because you got, we got her back and, or email and, and, you know, she came back and she said, you know, I just want to thank you, um, for, for all your help over the years. And, and this really has changed my life. And, and it wasn't necessarily the, the training that, that changed her life. I mean, I'm sure that part of this 
sales was part of it. But a lot of that was just about her own her own inner awareness and and of who she is and how she reacts to the world. And I think that's one of the things that we really look to try to to to, to do with people when we're going through this training is, you know, that self awareness is is a is a gold mine, right? Because that's the thing that I think once you have that and you realize how you're really coming across to people um, it allows you to go back and say, okay, you know, maybe it's not that person. Maybe that person is okay. And maybe it's me. I'm the one that's kind of coming across this way. And so then you have the opportunity to kind of take a step back and say, okay, how could I do this differently? Or how could I have approached that situation differently? And I know as you guys have talked about in your own, you know, relationships, man, it was a huge win for me to find out, you know, my wife wasn't just trying to piss me off. <laughs> She's doing things because she happens to be a great big S, you know, and she's an, she's an, uh, an IS also. And, um, so she's the, the opposite of me in many ways. Luckily we, we come together on our, on our motivators. Um, but that's just, you know, and you have to kind of learn and, and having, you know, had a lot of my employees go through our programs and, and people that I worked with in the past and, and, you know, every single time that we kind of work together on these things and they say, man, had I known this stuff today, you know, have I known what I know today, you know, five years ago, man, we could have been, we could have really just, you know, ruled the world or we could have done so much different, you know, and, and, and so I think it's interesting when you're kind of talking to people a couple of years later and see how that's kind of started to impact their lives. That is fabulous, Sean. And I was going to make you go over there and talk about your personal life because I thought, you know, you've got a few children, you've got a spouse. Hey, so it works at home too, right? Oh, yeah, it works at home. That was one of the things in finding out my daughter and having her run it because I'm like, man, this girl is so much like me. I'm so sorry. I created this <laughs> created this person. But she's on, she's a DC. So she's, um, you know, she's a little bit more exacting in some things than I am. And that always caused some conflict because neither one of us want to be wrong, of course. And, you know, and she's the one that wants to prove it. And I'm the one like, I'm right because I said I'm right. So just listen to me and I've got the experience. So, you know, be quiet. <laughs> and she's like, she's bound and determined to prove me wrong. And, you know, some of the times she'll come back and she'll say, this is what I found. Or sometimes she'll come back and say, yeah, yeah, you were right. <laughs> And that's the nice part about that high C in her is that if you're right, she'll come back and prove you're right. That's a good thing. Yeah. But she'll say it in very quiet tones. And <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Alex, how would you know that a high C does that? <laughs> mm, I have no idea considering that my wife is a high CD and I'm a high IS. So we are absolutely polar opposites oh, on the yeah. graph. And uh, and like like you said, Sean, if if... Thankfully, we did figure this out as, as a married couple about two years into our relationship, and, and it really saved our marriage. Um, and I think it can do that for a lot of people. Once you have that self-awareness that you, that you talked about, that was really, really insightful. Once you're aware, and then you can share that information with someone else, and they're aware, then you can, you can make changes and, and, and adapt and, and understand that yeah, you know, we're not, like you said, we're not just trying to kill people. We're, 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 you know, we're just wired differently. It's true. And, and my wife being, you know, being the, the high S and then also being very altruistic, you know, she wants to go out and save the entire world. And, and, and that's one of the things I told her. I said, man, you are driving me crazy. And it's like, why are you doing that? You know, we've got kids we've got to worry about. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the kids are fine. We need to go out and we need to save this puppy. <laughs> or, you know, we've got to go out and we've got to do this. I'm like, and it was one of those things that just, you know, constantly was driving us crazy until I figured out. I'm like, oh, well, that explains everything. It does make a difference. I know it might have happened. It always helps in the marriages to make sure you're clear on that. So won't go down the big marriage track just yet. <laughs> yeah. Sean, is there anything, um, our time's getting close to wrapping up, but is there anything that as you thought about talking today with us about um, kind of how DISC has worked with you as, as a manager and a, and a vice president that you wanted to share with the listeners? No, I, I think, you know, one of the things that, um, that is really great about um, using these is, is within the, the job benchmarking and, and being able to do gap analysis. And I think as you're going through your hiring process, you know, and, and, and let me say this before I continue that thought is that, you know, and I've done uh, other programs, you know, uh, whether it be Culture Index, Myers-Briggs, I think I've probably run through 15 different personality and behavioral analysis. And, and I do those because it's, it's one of the things I kind of like the validation, regardless of which one that I take, is that I'm a great big ID. And they, they may, you know, say it that I'm a trailblazer, or they may say that something else, you know, but I, I think one of the, the important things is it doesn't matter which program that you use, but you should use something. 
And I think that, you know, as going through and having hired people without a job benchmark and without running the gap analysis, and then now having gone to the point to where I run those um, and I look for those traits, you know, to, that fall within the job benchmark, it, it really did change the way that, um, that we were able to hire effectively. And so I can say that, you know, my success rate with hiring people, you know, when I do a job benchmark is, is astronomically better than, than when I don't run a job benchmark. Um, you know, and I would probably say if I could do it over again, I would probably run job benchmarks on most positions to make sure that that person is fitting. But again, remembering not just fitting within the job benchmark, but fitting the, the, the person that they're being hired to, to work for as well. Yeah, that's key, isn't it? Alex, do you have any last minute questions for uh, Sean? I don't. I just uh, really appreciate your uh, spending your time with us today, Sean. And some tremendous insights that uh, that have come from from the C suite, and, and I know that we've got folks who listen to the show who are listen for it for personal reasons. They listen to it from a managerial standpoint, and they they've got teams they work with, maybe departmental um, leadership uh, positions. Obviously, folks in the C suite working with in the C suite themselves as a team, but then you know trying to best lead their organizations. It's been really really insightful. Appreciate your time, and love the blue heart <laughs> <laughs> over your left shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. That's oh, the one. hey, before we run, Sean, give a little plug to uh, what team is doing in terms of the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Team is uh, is now in our 20th year of sponsorship of the USA Luge. And so we're really excited about uh, about everything kicking off. And it looks like I think there's some that's going to be televised tonight. And so that's pretty exciting. And so because we've, we're now in our 20th year and we are the second largest sponsor for the Luge team, we really get a lot of access to athletes. And so, you know, we really have had a great opportunity to kind of spend a lot of time with each of these and, um, and some Aaron Hamlin and Emily Sweeney, some of these uh, absolutely phenomenal young ladies and I haven't had as much time with a lot of the, the, the male athletes uh, just because they they haven't been around it's some events that as, as much as the females have but these are just phenomenal athletes and they really just do have a love for their sport and a love for their country and so we're really excited to see that kind of that starting today and then go luge that's right. And I just wanted to mention that I think you sat, we had sat and had dinner with Erin Hamlin just this last summer, and she's going to be carrying the flag for uh, USA. Yeah, so it's so exciting. So thank you for everything the team has done for uh, USA Luge and our Olympians. Yeah, absolutely. That is way cool. Hashtag jealous. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That was for the, my 15 year old out there. Um, that is way cool. Yes. Luge and skeleton and, and all of those sledding sports, you know, Bob said, obviously, you know, people really know, but those folks who don't really understand luge, uh, or skeleton, you know, skeleton, you're going to actually down mm-hmm. head first, just luge feet first. Um, it's, uh, it's crazy. And in Europe, it's, it's, it's all the rage. They even have luge courses that you can do recreationally. Yeah. Um, that are you know not on they're not frozen they're just they're just like on on wheels and things like that. and my brother did one when he was stationed over there in Europe he's a, he's in the navy as well and he said there's absolutely phenomenal mm-hmm. so uh, so yeah get out there and support the the Team USA and and the Luge team and, and all of our athletes uh, as they go through the games here awesome well Sean again thank you so much for being with us today really really appreciate it and uh, best of luck to the team and, and now and in the right, future thanks guys thank you. So that's going to do it for today's show. I'd like to thank Liz Parker uh, for joining me today. Liz, how can folks get in touch with you for job benchmarking and other things? By the way, thanks, Sean, for talking about the job benchmarking. They can get a hold of me through ltresults.com and email me at liz at ltresults.com. And I'd love to hear from you. Wonderful, wonderful. To get in touch with me, visit the rapportadvantage.com. If you're interested in finding out what style you are or to get a personality picture of your entire team, head over to the rapportadvantage.com, click on the rapport store tab, and the blue rapport store link will then take you to the assessment page to find the right one that fits you. Assessments generally take about you know, 10 to 15 minutes and they offer a ton of insights into your specific style. Liz and I are both on LinkedIn, so look for us there for sure. We appreciate you spending time with us today. If you like what you're hearing so far, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, which is used to be iTunes, but now they're Apple Podcasts. They've rebranded. We're also on Stitcher. We're on Spotify, Google Play. Um, so you can find us pretty much anywhere that uh, you have uh, ac- access to podcasts out there. So take us with you in the car. In Well, I was going to say in the shower, but don't take us in the shower. That would be bad. Um, just take us wherever you go, uh, and uh, we'll be happy to help you with any kind of personality issues that you might and have. And Alex, before we go, uh, can we tell people how they can get a hold of Sean? Sure. Sean, share with us kind of where they can find you. 
Okay, uh, either Team Worldwide, www.teamww.com, uh, or by email at Sean, S E A N, dot Brandenburg at teamww.com. Uh, that's B R A N B E N B U R G, just like the concertos and just like the gate. <laughs> He is, he is history of the gate, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> that is fantastic. Anything you need to ship from bananas to radioactive materials to, to dress shirts. That's us. <laughs> that can take care of it for you. All right, super. On our next podcast, we're going to provide more insights. But for now, this is Alex saying goodbye, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Rapport Advantage podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Join the conversation on Facebook at The Rapport Advantage and follow us on Twitter at Rapport Podcast.